Natalie Erica James, director, co-writer of Relic. Welcome to Flip Your Wig. Your film is out um, in most places this week, including the UK in select cinemas, also on streaming sites. How the hell are you feeling? Is it a lot because you're doing all these interviews? Have you had a moment to be like, it's finally out? Yeah, no, this is wonderful. I mean, we had the US release mid-year, so it feels like the Relic journey is coming to an end in the UK, which is kind of bittersweet, but yeah, completely wonderful. And I can't believe this is your debut feature. That's, nice. congratulations. <laughs> no, because you know you're allowed to kind of have a few bumps in your first one, right? And you've done such an awesome job with the detail. Like, I feel like every little thing that I was watching, I was like, oh my gosh, she really thought about it. Um, now, does it feel, are you happy when you watch it back now, thinking all the times that maybe people thought I was being a little bit anal, a little bit extra, it was all worth it. I needed all those bits for this film to be what it needed to be. Yeah, no, I um, I have to say, I, I haven't seen it since Jan and I probably am happy not watching it for a long time because, you know, you, you work on the thing for six years probably and, you know, in post you're watching it over and over. So um, I'm quite happy uh, not watching it for some time, but I definitely have to say that the way people are responding, it, um, it, it feels very well worth it, yeah. T? Do you know where you were, Mum? I suppose I went out. Is it a surprise? Because you've got all the festivals behind it, Sundance, various people, everybody was screaming about it quite early on. Has it, does it still surprise you? Like, I don't know if you are a social media queen. Do you check to see what people are saying? Um, not just the critics, but actually people that just love films. Yeah, um, I guess, yeah, I would say it's a surprise either way because you quickly lose perspective when you're in the thick of it. And I could not have told you how people would have responded to it uh, when I finished it. So it has been a very pleasant surprise. And um, I try not to uh, read anything that's like on Twitter or YouTube or anything like that. I just find it way too confronting. So it's been mostly kind of reviews that friends have sent me and that kind of yeah. What's this? That was on the property when your grandfather inherited it. His mind wasn't there in the end. You can't put Cran in a home. Do you know when I know uh, diversity, equality is all sorted is when we stop asking these questions. Because a part of me just feels like you're having this huge moment and I don't want it to be made, uh, want it to be about you're a woman. You're a diverse woman, you know. But I feel like at the same time, you are an example of somebody that's rocking it, had three leading ladies from three different generations in a film. Sometimes women, even of a certain age, stop being given leading roles. And it's hard not to mention it. So I don't know, what are your thoughts on this subject? It's a hard one um, because yeah, I agree. It would be lovely to, you know, for it not to be a topic of conversation. It's just a fact of life. Um, I think that it's very encouraging to see all the progress um, that's been made so far and particularly in the horror genre um, and the idea of kind of cl uh, reclaiming that space um, for women and for people of colour, um, that's really exciting as well. Um, but I still think the numbers are pretty abysmal and the percentage of you know, men to women are pretty, still pretty low. So. Uh, I think we need to remain vigilant. That would be my, uh, yeah, remark on that. Mum, what is it? It's here. Under the bed. There's nothing under the bed, Mum. Will you check for me? The cast was so brilliant. Everybody just seemed like a little family, like it was such fun, but equally very intense. And they've, they've said in front of you, I've seen in many interviews that you were quite tough. And there were times when they were being a bit stroppy with you, but they still absolutely believed in your vision. As a first time feature film director, that is so flipping rare when your cast completely trust you and say, yes, we'll do whatever you say. I mean, how did that feel? And how difficult was it for you to get their trust? Uh, yeah, I felt like, I mean, that was definitely my 
biggest fear probably going into the project, you know, working with such experienced actors and uh, that relationship, you know, really has to work to be able to uh, direct effectively. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say, you know, I think you just have to show up every day and, um, you know, be, be passionate about your work. And that's probably the thing that will shine through to your actors. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely felt like they had my back the whole way through. And even though there were, you know, moments that were, uh, I, I think are inevitable when they're having to work in such kind of heightened emotional states. Um, the whole time I never felt like, yeah, any pushback on anything. It was truly a collaboration, so yeah. Was there a moment between four of you that you think, ah, that is that moment from shooting the film that's gonna stay with me? Um, probably some of the stunts that we had to do. Um, yeah, and you know, probably shooting that kind of tussle on the floor <laughs> at the end of the film, that was the most mental in terms of the amount of action that was happening and, you know, the two cameras going handheld as well. And um, yeah, I think it was it was um, fun um, and felt kind of not, not risky in a safety kind of way, but like we were pushing <laughs> the edges or something. So yeah, I think, um, I think we had a lot of fun doing those things. The other interesting thing is it's not a traditional horror. I don't, I don't think you can place it in, oh, it's a haunting, or it's horror, or it's, it's psychological. But the time that we're living in and talking about mortality and just how we feel about health and age as well, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, just various things. There was a film I watched recently at London Film Festival, um, Supernova, which was um, all about a couple and one having early signs of dementia and wanting to make a choice of not being around before he starts to lose his, his kind of senses because he's a writer, he's super creative. So it's really interesting because in this story, in this film, I think that you absolutely made us think about those things even more so as well. My grandmother had Alzheimer's for quite a while before she passed and uh, I actually started writing it when I uh, was taking a trip to go visit her. So yeah, it was very much steeped in, you know, working through some of my feelings in that experience and watching my mother's relationship with my grandmother change over time and all those kinds of things. And there's really kind of unsettling moments that arise from, you know, someone who's losing parts of themselves and um, uh, sees you as a stranger. Like that's a really uh, scary kind of thing to experience as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad those kind of big themes about morality, uh, mortality rather came across. And for me, I feel like it, it has to have, you know, I, I really am drawn to, to stories and films because of their ideas. And so in some ways the, the genre is the vehicle that um, pushes the narrative forward, but it really is about, you know, what are we saying here with the film and what message are we putting out into the world? Gran, mom. Mom! She called me a few weeks ago. I think she was scared. She thought someone was coming into the house. It's out in the UK this week. We're having a bit of a, um, an insane, but we're all adapting time in our industry. And obviously we would have loved to have had you here as well doing the premiere and all that kind of stuff. But we've still got like loads of like cinemas, especially art house, smaller cinemas that are open across the UK, unlike the big massive ones that are all shut at the moment. Um, how much would you love people to go to the cinema to watch this film rather than a streaming? I mean, it's great, they've got that choice. But the cinema experience is so flipping different, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, the main thing is probably that uh, you get to watch it with other people. And I feel like horror really is best enjoyed in a, in a group and uh, a socially distanced group, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but it's like comedy, you know, you kind of absorb the uh, atmosphere around you in the audience so it can really heighten the experience and also of course you know be brilliant for people to see it in the darkness of the cinema um, and with the sound system as well all important in horror so Natalie um congratulations um I hope you get to really enjoy your feature film thank you so much for talking to me I can't wait for everyone to watch it and just be completely freaked out <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it thank you.